Well, good afternoon and welcome to this uh, second short reflection here in Holy Week. And um, I hope you're all keeping safe and well at this time. Today, we're going to be looking at a passage from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, and the, verse, and the first six verses. Judas agrees to betray Jesus. Now, the festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus. They were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the offices of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Judas sorry, Jesus, over to them when the crowd was not present. I don't know about you, but have you ever felt like scheming something and planning it through meticulously, knowing that it was wrong? Well, here was Judas, who had spent three years uh, beside Jesus, having witnessed, along with the other disciples, some amazing miracles having seen with his own eyes people set free and healed and restored, experienced some incredible teaching too. Maybe he understood more than the others that Jesus was going to give up his life. He was never going to be the king that was going to bring freedom from Rome. And Jesus, and Ju sorry, Judas knew that Jesus was not going to live up to his expectations. Maybe there is a burden that you are carrying to this very day that Jesus has not taken away or an unanswered prayer or maybe a tragic circumstance. Disappointment so often leads to betrayal. I was challenged once again by checking my own motives. What does it mean to be fully, well, to, to fully serve Jesus to be his disciples and imitate the teacher, to follow wherever he leads. There are times when my own agenda is paramount and I decide that this is what I would like Jesus to do for me. Instead of choosing the following, what God has planned, what he has destined for me. Let us all commit ourselves afresh to him. In doing so, uh, this will prevent the enemy, Satan, from infiltrating our lives. In our reading, we see once again, Satan enters Judas and tries to get rid of Jesus. Once again, he becomes uh, possessed by Satan himself. Like Judas, we too can so easily open the door for Satan to enter. Today we see the effects of, of a satanic, satanic influence across this world through addiction, through domestic violence, child abuse, terrorism and shootings, knife crime and genocide, and indeed COVID-19, the coronavirus. Satan loves to get in when we slip up and follow our own sinful desires. How much more during this time of isolation to keep contact, keep the connections going with each other, to continually support and encourage one another and primarily to keep ourselves close to Jesus. Satan will always try to uh, capitalise capitalize on our weaknesses. Let us remember that Jesus died for all of us, for each one of us. For all the times I have let him down, for the times I have betrayed him. If Judas, Judas had humbled himself before Jesus and repented, Jesus would have fully forgiven him, just as he does with each one of us. So let us together be encouraged. Let us encourage each other to stay close to Jesus as we allow him to mould and shape us into the disciples, the human beings each one of us are called to be. Amen.
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, you knew one of your disciples would betray you, another deny you, and the rest forsake you. Yet still you went to your death. You know that we are no better than that. With far less reason, we continue to betray, deny and forsake you today. Yet still you love us. Despite the weakness of our faith, and the poverty of our discipleship, you go on caring. Faithful to us, no matter how faithless we may be to you. Accept our thanksgiving and give us strength to show our gratitude through staying true to our calling. Wherever the path may lead, for your name's sake. Amen. And a final prayer. Lord, thank you for loving us more than life itself. God, life is hard and uncertain. So much pain, hurt and heartache seems to surround us. And yet, knowing this, you still willingly gave up your life and became God with us and God who rescues us. Thank you. Because of your sacrifice, we can spend eternity with you. There is no pain you cannot conquer, no hurt you cannot heal, no life you cannot transform. Your death and resurrection prove that nothing is impossible for you and that we are more than conquerors because of you. Today and every day, help us to fix our hearts and our minds on you. And as we do, Please give us more of your joy, hope and peace. We love you and we want to worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.